and we're live. Five, four, three, two, one. Committee on Legislation, Tuesday, June 15th, 2021. Council Member Farletto. Here. Council Member Glombach. Is here. Council Member Nowakowski. Here. Council Member Rivera. Council Member Scanlon. Present. Council President Pridgen. Here. Council Member Bowman. Present. Quorum is present. From the town. Item number one, food store license, 2183 Genesee. This item is open. It's a food store license in the Lovejoy district. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we're going to send this item without rack. I met with the store owner and we will uh, meet with the block club as well. But this is our owner. He lives right on the street, right on Crossman Street. He's um, been a part of the store for many years and he's always helped out with the community whenever we need it. So we're going to send it without rec uh, at this time. Thank you. Motion to send without rec. Seconded by Council Member Scanlon. Item number two, special use permit, 74 Jones. Motion to table items one, two, three, four, and five for public hearing on 629-21. Seconded by Council Member Golombek. Item number six, petition to repave Oshawa Ave. Motion to receive and file. Seconded by Council Member Nowakowski. Item seven, special use 1893 Niagara for tavern and outdoor dining. Items open. This item is open. Um, looks like there was a public hearing that already took place. So this isn't a public hearing. This is in council member Glumbeck's district. Is the council member here? Since I, I don't see the council member here, um, or his, he's having computer connections, we will table this item unless we hear otherwise. You wanna send it without rec? Sure, we'll send it without rec. Motion to send without rec. Seconded by council member Scanlon. Item number eight, special use permit, 1911 Seneca for tobacco establishment and then three E zone. Motion to send without recommendation. Seconded by Council Member Scanlon. Mr. Chair. Council Member Scanlon, you have the floor. Thank you. I do see that the applicant is with us here today. Um, I want to apologize to him. This did um, slip past me last week, so I do want to apologize to him. I will catch up with him between now and next Tuesday's meeting so we can get everything squared away. So I do apologize to him, but we'll get moving on this this week. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, great, thank you. Um, next item. Item number nine, Ordinance Amendment, Chapter 261, Lead Paint Hazard. Items open. This item is open. Um, does the sponsor of this, Council Member Nowakowski, like to speak on this? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a, uh, an, a fix to the lead ordinance and it's really just to uh, clarify and uh, specificize the city's responsibility and liability in, in the lead ordinance, but it was the uh, amendment was crafted by our corporation counsel, Kara Gordon. If she'd like to state for the record of what exactly um, in the legal parameters uh, this uh, ordinance amendment does. I'm sorry, I don't, I was not the, the drafter of this. I believe it was Anna Falikoff, and I got a, information from her today that she's unable to make it to the, um, today's meeting, but she should be available next week. Great, we can uh, bring it up you know, when it comes to caucus for the record, but this really is just to, for, for clarification and to perfect the ordinance. So if we can please make a motion to approve. You wanna approve it? Yes, please. Motion to approve. Seconded by Council President Pridgen. Item 10, ordinance amendment, section 13-21, right to no law. Can you scroll up please? Item 10 is open. This item is open. Uh, it is sponsored 
by Council President Pridgen and Council Member Wingo. Would either one of the sponsors like to speak on this item? Mr. Chair, I think that uh, there's someone from the public here to speak on it. Okay. Is there someone here to speak on this item? Right now, I can only see Council President Pridgen. So if you're here to speak on this, you can take the floor and start speaking. Mr. Chairman, we had a request from a Samantha White to speak on the item. Uh, she had confirmed, but however, I do not see her connected at the time. So Mr. Chair, if, if there's no one out, I'll, I'll speak briefly about it. Um, this is uh, just the right to know law, which have been brought to us by the Minority Bar Association and other groups um, who uh, modeled uh, this um, after a successful um, right to know law in Syracuse, and I believe there's one in New York City, which basically is, this is not uh, to penalize police officers, it is really to continue our efforts to build trust uh, with community. Um, and so this basically, if a person is stopped um, the officer uh, would have to give identification or some type of, in this for lack of a better term, a business card uh, to that person. So that person would know uh, who has stopped them. Uh, it also brings into law some of the things uh, that were uh, by executive order. Um, and so we have discussed this at length. So I won't take up time uh, in this uh, meeting to discuss it again, uh, because nothing has uh, changed since we talked about it uh, over a month ago. All right. What would you like done? Uh, to approve. Approve, motion to approve. Seconded by council member Nowakowski. Item 11. Uh, I'm going to take a tip, Mr. Chairman. All right, so it's uh, the motion to approve by Council President Pridgen, seconded by Council Member Nowakowski, with Council Member Golumbek recorded in the negative. Thank you. Item 11, Ordinance Amendment, Chapter 96, Bonds and Contracts, Living Wage. To Chairman, we're going to send that. Uh without recommendation and allow Anna Falikoff to come in and caucus and um, to talk about this ordinance amendment. So we'll send it without recommendation. Okay, motion to send without rec, seconded by Council President Pridgen. And then if council staff, you could please request that Anna Falikoff is present at caucus next week to discuss this item and the item on the lead. Thank you. Uh, take from the table items 13, 14, and 16. Seconded by Council President Pridgen. Chair. Sure. Council Member Wyatt. Um, I'm sorry. If you don't mind, this is Raylene McGee um, speaking. Raylene, we don't have an item open right now. If you can just hold on until there's until your item is up. Thanks. Council Member Wyatt. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to connect with you earlier, um, but I wanted to know if we could also open item number 34 in legislation up for discussion. If we could sure, take we'll re remove item. So we'll remove item 34 from the table as well. Motion by Council President Pridgen, seconded by, or motion by Council Member Rivera, seconded by Council President Pridgen. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Council Member Scanlon. Could I make a motion to remove item 18 from the table as well? well I'm sorry, Council. I'm sorry, that we, I, I didn't communicate that earlier. I'm sorry, um, motion to remove item 18 from the table. Seconded by Council Member Scanlon. Excuse me, I, I this is Seth Ammon. I was just curious uh, about 390. Seth, your item's not up. When the public hearing's open, you'll have an opportunity to speak, I think you're here on number 13. So that's the next item. So oh, sorry. trial and procedure, we'll open the public hearing, then you'll have the floor. So no problem. Item 13, special use permit 391 Forest for neighborhood shop, office, and N2R zone. Motion to open the public hearing. Seconded by council member Scanlon. 
So now the public hearing's open and not to um, speak over you or, or interrupt you earlier, but we wanna make sure that since it's a public hearing, everything that you have to say is on the record. And now that the public hearing is open, um, it's officially on the record. So Seth, you have the floor. Okay, thank, thank you. I, I'm, I'm the architect for 391 uh, Forest Ave, and it is an existing three unit apartment building with a little storefront out front. Um, unfortunately, the little 400 square foot office and the attic apartment was never permitted. However, the current uh, um, uh, landlords, I guess, owners of the property are interested in uh, bringing this up to uh, code and permitting the, the process. And while an office is technically not allowable in an N3 and to our zone, uh, we feel that since it's right across the street from the Richardson Center, which is largely commercial and green space, and that uh, Daniela's uh, restaurant is right next door, that a 400 square foot um, office right on forest would not be a detrimental use uh, for the neighborhood, and it could only provide a, a benefit for smaller business types um, within the city of Buffalo. Otherwise, the three units are uh, permissible within the zone, and like I said, they will all be brought up to code and permitted this time around. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here to speak on this item? Hearing none, I will um, open the floor to Council Member Rivera, whose district this is in. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. We welcome um, the work that's being done at that location. As he mentioned, it is a three unit um, that was permitted. Um, and uh, we're gonna continue to work with Mr. Seth on that and other projects within the district. He's done great work, uh, not only there, but at five points. So. Uh, welcome to Forest. Thank you very much. I will motion to approve once you close. Okay, motion to close the public hearing, seconded by Councilmember Nowakowski, and motion to approve, seconded by Councilmember Glumbeck. Item 14 Special Use Permit 427 Elmwood for Tavern and Outdoor Dining in N2C Zone. Motion to open the public hearing. Seconded by Councilmember Glumbeck, is there anyone here to speak on the public hearing for this item? Yes, Raylene McGee. Okay, Raylene, you have the floor and I'm sure you heard me before. I didn't, I want to make sure that it's all part of the record for the public hearing. So I didn't mean to cut you off earlier. It's not a problem. I came a couple minutes late, so not a problem. Um, yes, I'm here seeking recommendation for um, outdoor dining special use permit along with a tavern special use permit for 427 Elmwood. It was the previous um, Epic Lounge. Um, we're a Buffalo raised family. We're trying to bring um, a wine bar with, you know, feel good food to the Elmwood area. Okay, great. Is there anyone else to speak on this item? Seeing None, I will open the floor to the majority leader, Council Member Rivera. Thank you very much. Um, we welcome you to the former Epic location. Have you met with any of the residents? Because that, uh, that is adjacent to Oakland Place. We did receive a lot of complaints in the past with regards to the patio and loud music um, that went beyond the properties. I, I just want to make sure that um, that the music is all indoors, um, that we work with the neighborhood there. Uh, certainly we're going to hear if there is loud music that goes beyond the party. Uh, what are your hours of operation? Right now we're open. We're going to be open um, Sunday through uh, seven days a week. We open up at 11 and our outdoor dining will be closing at 11 along with the restaurant, except for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, any later hours we're allowed to, up to 2 a.m. Um, uh, as part of the outdoor dining, there will be no music outdoors, um, no trash cans out inside service. Um, we are aware, we did talk to neighbors, the barbershop, the salon, the, um, the vegan food restaurant, 
that is on the same street. And we talked about, you know, some of the problems that Epic Lounge, uh, the crowd it brought in, the music, um, the complaints there. So um, that was a, a lounge club. We want to bring a restaurant. And you said that the patio will be open to 11 o'clock? That's correct. Okay. Now, I, I just want to be consistent as to the hours patios are open. I'm trying to keep them in line. Uh, so I'm going to send this without recommendation once we close the public hearing, because I just want to make sure that, um, uh, you know, we want to keep it consistent in terms of what the hours of operation are for the patios um, there on Elmwood and even in other places. So we'll send it without recommendation and we'll, we'll have further discussion on that before Tuesday. Mr. Chair. Motion is to close the public hearing, seconded by Council Member Glumbeck. Motion to send without rec, seconded by Council Member Nolkowski. Item 16, local landmark 926 West F. Item is open. This item is open. Um, is this, do we have to open a public hearing? Motion to open the public hearing, yes. Seconded by Council President Pridgen. Is anyone here to speak on 926 West Avenue? Anyone from the Preservation Board or the applicant? Does anyone have any in, anyone here to speak on this? Okay. Um, I. I guess, Council Member Rivera. Mr. Chair, we're gonna motion to close the public hearing and table this item, allowing for the applicant and the preservation to come and speak on that. Okay, motion is to close the public hearing, seconded by Council Member Scanlon, motion to table, seconded by Council Member Golombek. Item number 18, special use permit 901 Furman Boulevard for pedestrian bicycle path and live entertainment. Motion to, um, was it to send without recommendation? Yes. Motion is to send without recommendation. Seconded by council member Scanlon. No further items, motion to adjourn. We have a couple more items coming off the table. Uh, item number 34, Ordinance Amendment, Chapter 479, School Zones. Did you miss item 29? I don't believe we made a motion to take 29 off the table. Right, right, Mark. Um, item is open. Okay, so it, right now there was a motion to open item 34, and that is seconded by Council Member Golombek. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, today is the 11th day that we passed the ordinance to repeal the school zone cameras. And from my understanding, as I reached out to the clerk, there was nothing forwarded by the mayor's office. So that would mean that this is now the law, um, that the school zone cameras will be ended. Um, the administration has an opportunity to notify the vendor by 60 days that the cameras need to be removed. And by September 1, hopefully my colleagues and thanks to my colleagues who stood with us um, in listening to the public regarding this issue, um, these cameras will be removed. No more fines will be displayed by September 1. Um, but again, let me just make it clear to folks, they still are lawful. The date that we said that this, this would be eliminated is September 1. So you still have to follow the current laws. However, that by September 1, we hope to have non-punitive measures in the districts that have said that they, when they remove those cameras, they will put the non-punitive measures in place, meaning speed humps, meaning uh, speed readers, and we still have the beacon. So again, um, I thank my colleagues, and again, for, for standing as well as um, Peter Reese and Peter Rizzo, who got the information that we needed to present to the public. Um, that this was not a great idea and that there are other measures that we can put in place that are 24 hours, meaning speed humps and other measures to improve um, traffic along our school zones. And also the, the fact that our school zones will go from 15 miles an hour to 20 miles an hour. I think it's a win for the public. I believe that that's what they've called to do to listen to them. 
and I believe we listened to them and we've got something in place. And so I look forward to working with my colleagues who have agreed to can put the striping in place, put the signage in place to make certain that we make sure that our children are safe um, and in pedestrians as well um, when school is not in session. So thank you again. Motion to table. Motion is to table, seconded by Council Member Nowakowski. No further items. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, seconded by Council President Pridgen.